This is Scott Michaud from PC Perspective, and our readers love DirectX and OpenGL. These two APIs accept geometry information and output a grid of colors. In a few places, developers can inject scripts, which are called shaders, to control what is performed. They're extremely fast because they use special hardware, which we call GPUs, but there's some limitations. Firstly, if you're a company like Epic Games, and you want to do something different, you're funding the API. Secondly, both performance and features can vary from one user to another. Thirdly, some platforms don't support one or the other API at all. And fourthly, sometimes the API simply produces the wrong answer. This is a screenshot from original Bioshock, which is based on Unreal Engine 3. Uh, it uses 64-bit HDR lighting to calculate delay intensity. And when you put any aliasing on a DirectX 9 engine running 64-bit HDR, there's a little bit of a quirk as you get to very different intensities of light. DirectX would actually give you the wrong answer. There is no way around it. Uh, this was actually not fixed for about another four or five years until the uh, Samaritan demo for DirectX 11 came out. Software rendering engines do not use either DirectX or OpenGL. They go into the bare mathematics and, using whatever method they choose, calculate pixel colors directly. Uh, they can ray trace, they can use voxels, they can even use the same scanline algorithms DirectX and OpenGL does. Perpetual Motion Engine is a software rendering engine which uses OpenCL, not DirectX, to draw geometry, or even shade it. Here I choose to continually draw a single triangle using my Intel HD 4000 non-processor graphics. When I switch to my GeForce GTX 670, you will see that the Intel GPU idles, or as the GeForce GTX 670 is under load. These images could even be layered, like you would see in Photoshop. Even more interesting, each layer could be calculated simultaneously by different devices. For instance, I could have a giant scene rendered using typical rasterization on my discrete graphics card, while my on-processor graphics, which don't much just idles, can do ray trace reflections on certain objects in the scene, and then the two textures be merged to the final output to the monitor. And then, of course, I can have a third CPU or GPU do processor and AI calculations. The game could give you a drop-down menu in the advanced options to say, I want this processor to do this, I want this processor to do this, I want physics to be done here, and I want ray tracing done here. It probably won't, because it probably knows best, but it could. Lastly, since we are just dealing with mathematics, any platform capable of using OpenCL kernels would be supported. If you're up for a real challenge, this could even be JavaScript and WebCL. As you can tell, Perpetual Motion Engine is developed in HTML5, CSS, JavaScript, WebGL, and WebCL. With WebCL, we can have our main code be in JavaScript, and whenever we come across a very big, difficult calculation, for example, find the colors of every pixel on the screen, we can send it off to a video card, bring back the answer, and get it from there. And it does not even require an internet connection. The engine is designed to detect whether you're running from a local file system, or whether you're running for a web server and adjust accordingly. So if you'd like to learn more, please check out the rest of my editorial. This is Scott Michaud for PC Perspective.